So in this practical video, we will talk about Goe collision factor assays. So this assay is a one-stage quantitative assay and uh, methods for factors 2, 5, 7, and 10. So the principle of this test is that the protrombin time is the basis of this test system with specific factor dis, uh, deficient plasma that is one stage being added to the patient plasma and the percentage of factor activity is determined by the amount of cor correction of PT when specific dilutions of the patient plasma are added to the factor deficient plasma and the results are obtained from an activity curve made using floating times of dilution of normal reference plasma and specific factor deficient plasma. So this type of a test is usually done on uh, automated machines. So what are the reagents and equipments? First we will need a commercial thromboplastin and specific factor deficient plasma that is factor number 2, 5, 7 and 10. So it is important to know that the factor deficient plasma utilized to be verified as having less than 1% activity for the specific factor being measured and close to 100% activity of all other factors. So again we will use imidazole buffered saline. So in most of the factor assays we will be using imidazole buffered saline which is of a pH of 7.3 2 or plus minus 0, 0 0.1 or orange buffer and the normal reference plasma which is commercial reference plasma with known factor levels that you will find in the kit and the instrument that is um, same that is used for protrombin assay now coming to the procedure we have two sets first one is the preparation of the activity curve and the second is the procedure for testing patient plasma. This is the, the test is quite lengthy, so I, I want you to listen carefully. So for preparation of the activity curve, I want you to note the numberings here. So we will go through really A, B, C, D, E, and so forth. So for first one is preparation of the activity curve. As, as I've discussed here, preparation of the activity curve. So first we have to prepare one is to tain. 1 is to 20 and then so forth to 1 is to 1 to 8 zero dilutions of the normal reference plasma with imidazole buffered saline or orange buffer and then 1 is to 10 dilution is considered as the 100% factor activity and it is recommended that at least 5 dilutions be used to prepare the factor activity curve although it is common to use 7 to uh, 8 dilutions so this is uh, suppose this is a tube one two three four five six seven and eight. So for tube one, amount of plasma that you put is zero point one, and then buffer saline zero point nine. Dilution one is to ten, and then percentage of the factor is hundred. So this is the first tube. So taking from tube one till eight, you will go serially serial dilutions as it is mentioned in this table. So now coming to the preparation of the activity curve, we will go to number B. First we have discussed number A and now number B. So first we have to warm the thromboplastin to 37 degrees Celsius. And then C, perform the following test procedure on each dilution. So as I mentioned earlier that this kind of a step is performed usually in automated coagulation analyzer. So what happens is that uh, we add 0.05 ml of the specific factor deficient plasma to 0.05 ml of the diluted plasma reference uh, normal reference plasma and it is warm up to 37 degrees celsius for a, a, um, a little time and then after that we add 0.1 ml of the commercial commercially available thromboplastin to the sample and we determine the floating time after that, testing may be performed either simply or in duplicates. So, if performing duplicate testing, repeat step 1 and 2. And on the duplicate sample and average results. 
so that is how it goes now coming to the preparation of the activity curve that is in a point T plot the results on 2 into 3 cycle log graph paper with person factor activity on the X F axis and second on the Y axis and draw draw a best fine line and the curve will demonstrate the value at the least concentrated dilutions and that should also be plotted as such and then demonstrating the end of the sensitivity for the assay so if using an uh, automated analyzer the curve is generally constructed internally and stored for a specific length of time so usually uh, what we perform is what we use is the automated or uh, automated analyzers so uh, calculation by manual will is time consuming so it is uh, advisable or it is more convenient to use an automated analyzer so this is the curve that we have made for suppose if you're doing for factor 5 activity curve so this is how the curve phase will show now coming to the second set that is procedure for testing patient plasma we have to warm thromboplastin to 37 degrees celsius after that uh, similarly to the first step we have to prepare serial dilutions from 1 to 10 to 1 to 20 and so forth and then dilutions are made uh, uh, dilutions of cytorrhea plasma patient plasma with imidazole buffer saline or orange buffer is made and if a third dilution is desired prepare L1 is to 4 40, 40 dilution and it is important to keep the samples and dilutions refrigerated until they are tasted so for number third we have to add 0.05 ml of specific factor deficient plasma to 0.05 ml of diluted patient plasma now coming to the procedure for testing um, plasma again continuing with the uh, testing of the patient plasma we have to add zero again we have to say add 0 0.1 ml of thromboplastin to the sample and determine the floating time and then testing may be performed either simply or in duplicates so similarly with the for, uh, with the test that we have been doing in the first set so similarly it goes on so repeat three four and five procedures so on the on the basis of the dilution of 1 is to 22 1 is to and 1 is to 40 dilution of the patient plasma and then multiplying the measured result by 2 or 4 respectively to correct for uh, respectively to correct the dilution ratio when compared with 1 is to 10 dilution and the result of the 1 is to 10 and then 1 is to 20 and 1 is to 40 dilutions should agree within 15 percent So what we have to keep in mind is that inhibitors will often have a dilutional effect. So demonstrating non-parallel curves with increasing dilution. So this should be considered if the results of 1 to 10 or 1 to 20 and 1 to 40 dilutions do not agree with within 15%. So in this case, results should not be uh, should not be averaged. But further dilutions such as what 1 is to 80 and then <coughs> 1 is to 160 etc performed until results of two consecutive dilution match within 15 percent and measure within linearity of the cali calibration curve so read the person activity directly from the activity curve that i've shown in the figure from from this curve a result of 35 seconds uh, on a 1 is to 10 dilution of patient plasma would be interpreted as 8.3 activity 8.3 percent activity and if the curve was generated using an automatic automatic calculation analyzer the result will be automatically read from the curve and printed out so what is the interpretation an approximate range of 50 percent to 150 percent is considered normal and in each laboratory, which should be defined on its own reference base, range on the instruments and the reagents and the 
patient population so this is a basic step for if clinical suspicion of lupus anticoagulant with prolonged activated partial thromboplastin time you have to incubate test PPP okay that is dilated poor plasma briefly with normal PPP and do ABTT on mixture so if ABTT is corrected you have to undergo the procedure and if ABTT is uncorrected then incubate PPT with concentrated phospholipid and repeat the APTT so the test goes on and then if ABTD remains uncorrected we have to check for the heparin and then if ABTD remains corrected we have to in investigate for factor deficient uh, investigate for factor deficient and then if ABTD is uncorrected then we have to investigate specific factor inhibitors such as um, MT factor 8 using the Petista titer and then if ABTD is corrected we have to check for lupus anticoagulant and then confirm with the EIAAs for antiphospholipid antibodies so that is a whole workup of uh, prolonged ABTD so I hope you have understood with the coagulation factor says thank you